to speak um, to you all today. And she's from Canada. Um, and so we're just really honored to have her, uh, her and her husband come a week before the summit and basically just work with our church to get ready for you. Um, and they're one of you. So it's a great blessing and they've kind of, kind of adopted them somewhat. Um, so we're just honored to have her and uh, I ask you just give your attention to her and yeah. All right. So before we do this, um, I need to have prayer. <laughs> but um, I'm going to speak to you about a cancer journey that I've been going through for eight years and how to be a good friend through somebody that's sick. I have a good friend um, that's going to pray for me, Mackenzie Manarese. pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, Lord, I just come to you today. I'm just so, so thankful that we're all here this morning, and God, thank you um, for just the messages that we've heard. God, I pray that, um, Lord, I, I just want to thank you for my friend Joanne, God, just for what you've done with her life, and um, Lord, what you've brought her through, and just the testimony that she's been to so many people. God, I pray that you would help her right now. I pray that you would give her strength, give her power, give her wisdom, what to say and what to um, do, Lord. I pray that you would open our hearts, Lord, and just prepare them. And I pray that we would get exactly what you have for us, Lord. And I pray that we would do with it exactly what you want us to do, Lord. I pray that you would give us comfort, you would give us strength, and you would give us help. Thank you so much for your goodness and for your mercy and for sending your son to die for us, Lord. I pray that you would be the rest of the sessions going on and the rest of the services, God. I pray that um, your will would be accomplished in your precious and most holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mackenzie. All right, so as, as uh, Ms. Carla said, my name is Joanne Norris, and I am from Canada, um, and we go to Bethel Baptist Church in Simcoe, Ontario, and um, my husband is Kevin Norris. We have three children, Corey, who is 32, Kayla, who is 29, Mackenzie, who is 17, and we have five grandchildren. We are very blessed. I'm uh, just going to give you a quick testimony on um, my cancer journey. Um, I'm not here to give you my whole cancer journey today, but I will give you a quick testimony because some of you may have heard it, some of you may not have. Um, I have been struggling with cancer, with God's help, of course, for the last eight years. It has been very much a roller coaster of cancer. Started off at a very early stage, uh, stage zero, um, breast cancer, and it was treated very quickly with chemo and God's help, of course. And um, at that time, when it was, it was, you know, taken away, we went through four and a half years of cancer-free. You know, they say in the medical um, field that once you're five years, you're a survivor. To me, as soon as God takes it away, you're a survivor. Um, so we, uh, at four and a half years, it did come back. It came back very aggressively um, with a tumor in the spine. So through the eight years, without giving you my whole story, I'll let you know where the cancer has been in my body. Um, started off in the breast, back um, tumor, to the brain, um, pancreas, liver, cervix, leukemia, and bone cancer. And I now have a new cancer today on my lung. So it has been a huge journey for my family and myself to go through this. But it has been an amazing journey that I can tell you today I would not change. And some people think, you're crazy. Why would you want to go through that? And because God has been so good through it. And the book of Romans tells us that, that he, we know that all things will work together for good. Um, so today I stand here um, with 37 spots on my bones, and I have a new tumor that is now in the lung that we are just kind of watching, but God has been so good through it all. Uh, the winter was very rough for us. Um, it was in the pancreas and the liver at that time, and so it was, it was a rough winter. Um, I did go down to 89 pounds um, because I couldn't eat. And um, it was just, it was hard. But you know, today, when Mrs. Clark asked me to speak, I of course assumed that I would give my testimony, because when I speak, 
I usually just give my whole cancer testimony, which of eight years is a very long testimony, <laughs> because God did so many things through those eight years that I can share. But she said, no, I want, to give you, I want you to give a little bit of your testimony, but I want you to talk about friendships. When people are going through cancer, sickness, trials, um, talk about friends and, you know, what they should say and shouldn't say. So I'm going to get a little raw, probably, <laughs> because there's things that you just shouldn't say. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people just say it. They don't mean it. And so never was I angry during some of the things that people said, but sometimes you, you just have to be careful what you're saying. So she kind of just wanted me to speak to you about that today. So um, that's what I'm going to go into now. Um, so just give me a second here, because without my glasses on, I cannot read anymore. All right, so things that have, have encouraged me. Um, number one thing that has encouraged me is prayer. And, you know, <laughs> to follow Pastor Williams, like seriously, faith, that man, and I'm thinking, God, you set this up for me <laughs> because all week long I've heard about prayer. We were here, like they said, a week before Brother Charlie preached about prayer, and I stayed up um, the Friday night with this church and prayed all night long. So prayer, ladies, is the best thing that you can do for a friend that is in need. And you know, on my worst times um, and days when I couldn't get out of bed, and you meet, I've met friends all over the world. Even though I don't know you're praying, I feel the comfort of your prayers. And your friends will feel that. So sometimes without even saying anything, you can just pray. And that is the best thing that you can do, to be quite honest. Encouraging notes. Um, I have a friend that gave me um, a jar of notes. And they had scripture in them. They had, um, they had songs in them. They just had sayings in them. They had some funny things in them that you could laugh. And every day I would pick one of those out and I would read them. And they were such an encouragement to me. Or sometimes you would get, um, just somebody would give you a note, you're having a bad day, so you don't necessarily want to open that note right away, because you just don't want to talk about cancer that day, you know? And so you would open up later, uh, when you felt like it, and you knew it was there, and it was an encouragement. And so I actually have, um, later at the end, I have little notes for, um, to give you cards. And so while you're sitting here, think about somebody that could use some encouragement, a friend today. And you can take that and you can fill it out and you can give it to them. And I guarantee you, it will be an encouragement to them. Um, meals for my family. When you're a wife and you're a mother, and that's what I do, that's my job. I take care of my family. And you can't cook for your family and you're so sick that even the smell of food, you can't handle. Um, my church family was so awesome. They just stepped in and they prepared meals for my family and I didn't have to worry about it. You know, it was just there. Now make sure when you're doing a meal that you, you know, ask them, what does your family like? What don't they like? So that you're giving them something that they do like. But it was just amazing that I didn't have to worry about it. The meals were there, my family was fed and, and that's just something that's taken a huge load off of you. Um, thoughtful gifts. I have a friend that um, she would know, she, knew, she knows me very well, and she would know like if I was nauseous or sick, she would go on the internet, she would find something that would just help me. So she would get me these little candies that when I was sick I could put in my mouth, or if I had back pain she would give me essential oils or something, and it was just so thoughtful that she thought about my needs. And they don't need to be expensive gifts, lady. They can just be something small. But thoughtful gifts were very helpful. Um, rides. So when the cancer went to my brain, they took my license away. And so I couldn't drive anymore. So just rides to the grocery store or to the bank. 
Um, when you lose your license, and you know maybe some of you in here are in that situation or you don't have a license and you just can't get where you want to go. You know, it's like, oh, I'd love to go just to the grocery store. I'd love to do this and go that, but you can't. And then I would have a friend that would just step in. And every Thursday, she would take me and we would do our errands. We would go and have lattes. And it was a fun time, but she would take me and we would, we would do these things. So it was, it was great. Um, housekeeper. Let me just have a drink of water here. Sorry. I like a clean house. And at one point, they had given me six months to a year to live. At that time, my husband did not want to put me in a hospice, so he built a room for me, and that would be my hospice room, and that would be where, at the time, we thought I would die. And I, to me, it's going home to be with Jesus. Um, but um, that is the room that we brought a hospital bed in. The nurses were coming in. And it was so grim at that time that we did go to the funeral home. We planned my funeral, um, picked out my casket, and just, um, it was hard. But I like a clean house. So to lay in a hospital bed, at the time the tumor that was on my back was pressing on the nerves and I was paralyzed on the right side. I did use a walker to get up and get around, but um, I wasn't able to clean my house. Friends of ours gifted us with a housekeeper. This housekeeper came into my house. She was very energetic, <laughs> very, very talkative. And so there was no getting away from talking to her. But I really shared the Lord with her. And she would, uh, she'd be like, oh, I don't know how you trust that God guy. Like, really, lady, you're sitting here. You can't walk, but yet you just love God. And I would keep sharing that with her, and um, as the time went on, I would just keep talking about her. And I didn't realize till later that she was going to tell all her friends about me and how, you know, that I love God just so much. And so one day she walked in. I had woke up one, and I remember it was a Monday morning, I would woke up and I could feel the feeling in my right side. And I said to my husband, I said, you know, something's going on. And he, um, he said, well, God's probably healed you, Joanne. He has way more faith than I do, I have to tell you. <laughs> and so anyways, I said, no, no. So I called my oncologist, and he said, probably what's happened is that tumor has shifted off, off the nerves, and that's why you have feeling. So, of course, I go get an MRI, and to make a long story short, God took that tumor from my back. <laughs> and um, yes, praise the Lord. And... Um, when Tina walked in that day, I was walking, and she said, what is going on? I said, let me tell you about what my God has done for me. And, you know, she was in awe, and later, much, much later, um, Tina accepted the Lord as her Savior, and I disciple her today. So, you know, that one soul to go through that trial to see in heaven one day is all worth it. So the trials that we go through, God will use them. Um, just sitting with somebody. I would have a friend that would just come and sit. She would bring a book, she would knit, and I just wanted to sleep, and she was okay with that. She would just sit there. Um, sending scripture or encouraging godly music. Um, if you're texting, sometimes our phone becomes our friendship. And we don't want that to happen. We want to have communication. But some days, you just, if somebody would text me, I necessarily wouldn't get back right away. We actually set up, my friend set up a Facebook page called Team Joanne. So, because I felt bad. You know, people are, they're in, trying to encourage me, but I just didn't have the strength to get back to them with every text that was coming through. So she would, we would put updates on there so that she could, you know, put the updates, I could put the updates, and people knew. But to get it just a, a scripture was an encouragement. To get some good godly music was an encouragement for me. Um, stay away if you're sick. If you're sick, stay away from the person. <laughs> and Mackenzie will amen that. Because when we're sick and our counts are very low, we need to be careful and stay away. So that's an encouragement, just to stay away. 
Now, this is gonna get harsh, and I want you to know, I'm not upset, but there's things that you just don't say, especially to people that have cancer. It's just hair, it'll grow back. When it's on your pillow and it's coming out, that's not what you wanna hear. Wow, you've lost a lot of weight. Yes, I know. <laughs> your color just does not look good. Just trust God instead of wearing a mask. Um, my hair is uh, growing back very dark. I've dyed my hair for a lot of years. I didn't really know what my real color was <laughs> until it started growing back. I'm like, oh, that's it, okay. <laughs> um, I like your hair dark, but I really prefer you as a blonde, you know? <clears throat> Well, I guess cancer is God's plan for your life, for God's will. God's will is to heal me. No, I might not be here, maybe in heaven, but his will is to heal me. It's not his plan. Um, maybe you have cancer because of your sin. Have you ever tried this diet or this natural cure? Um, should you be eating that if you have cancer? Those are just some of the things. And again, ladies, you know, people are trying to encourage me, but just before you speak, think, because it may not be an encouragement. So today, on how to be a good friend to somebody with cancer or who is sick, Mark 2 tells us about the four men who helped their friend find their way to Jesus. Their friend was not able to walk. What did they do? They carried him through a crowd. They lowered him in because they loved their friend enough to help him. He was able to meet Jesus, and Jesus healed him so he could walk again. Ladies, if your friends are crying, let them cry. Cry with them if you want. Sometimes you are going to have to drop everything you're doing in your busy schedule because we all have busy schedules, but you're going to have to drop everything and go to that friend. Um, I have friends all over. I have a lot of friends here in Jersey, and sometimes I can't talk to them, but we will FaceTime, we will text, we will message each other, and that's an encouragement because you have prayer all over the world, and that's a comfort. Good friends will just sit with you in dark times. It doesn't need to be cancer. It doesn't need to be sickness. We all go through trials, and sometimes we just need to sit with each other. Um... <clears throat> God does this for us, too. He sees our tears. He even keeps track of them. Um, we need to try and be a friend like Jesus is. Don't miss those sweet times as friends. Be ready and willing. Galatians 6, verse 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so, and so fulfill the law of Christ. John 15, verse 3 says, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Friends need to encourage in grace and in truth, but in a way that directs us to God. When I reach out to a friend and say, I have to go through chemo again, and I'm upset because I'm going to lose my hair, I don't want to hear, well, it's only hair, it will go back. I want, to hear, I want her to take me by the hand and lead me to the king. And remember that God is good and that she's praying for me and she's sorry this is happening to me. We need to thank God for those friends in our lives who point us towards God. God has blessed me with friends that have walked the same cancer valley. I have friends in this room today that have had the same struggles. I have a friend in this room today that knows what it's like to lose a husband that's now in heaven with cancer. God has given me so many people that I can relate to, and God provides those people. He does. He, it's amazing how God can use this, and all of a sudden, you make that connection, and you know. In Romans, um, it's one of my favorite verses, is Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good, for them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Ladies, God has allowed us to go through valleys, and I'm sure you've all been through valleys. Um, <clears throat> some are deep, 
some are small, but it's just, it's, it doesn't matter, it's still a valley. And so as a friend, you can help your friend in the valleys by being an encouragement. And just by standing beside them. And sometimes, that's not saying anything at all. Just be quiet. Feel the quietness. It's great. And sometimes we don't need to talk. I just need you right there beside me. And that's all. <clears throat> God wants us to share the trials in our life. I have to tell you, I struggle with this. I'm standing here today, and my bo- most of my body has had cancer. And I, I get so many times I get that survivor's guilt. That little boy broke my heart last night. And, I'm, and I, had, I have to tell you, I was in the choir room, and I broke. And I did. I questioned God. Like, why, Lord? I know what cancer's like. No child should have to experience that. And I'll tell you right now, give me cancer, but don't give my kids cancer. So as a mother, to watch that, I have no idea how that would feel. But I do know that God is good. And I do know that God will heal Anthony. Will it be here? I don't know. But I do know that if you keep on the right track and that you keep your eyes on Jesus through the valleys, that you will see the blessings. And don't get bitter through those trials. Don't get angry through those trials. Can you question why? Absolutely. It's okay to question why. It's okay to say, I'm not okay today. And I think that's, I think that's what us ladies, we have to put this front on that, you know, everything's good and I'm okay. No, it's okay not to be okay. But we just need to go to God. In the book of Nehemiah 2, verses 18, um, Pastor Clark preached this once, and it just went boom to me because I had struggles with me still being here and people already gone home with cancer. And young people... And it says, then I, at the end of the verse, it says, then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. That clarified to me that God wants me to tell about his hand that was on me and what he's did for my life. So we need to tell of the good things that God's done for us, even in the bad times. We need to make sure that we are telling those things. Ladies, if you are the person today going through the sickness, I don't know any of you in here hardly. If you are going through the sickness, the pain today, um, it's so important not to close your friends out. Friends want to know how to pray for you. It's so hard to pray if you don't share. Ephesians 4 Verse 2 says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. We have to tell each other. You know, like, no, you don't need to tell each other everything. I get that. But don't close yourself out. Don't do that. <clears throat> the greatest grace in having healthy expectations is that we can expect God to take care of us as we move forward. We are sinful, ladies, but guess what? I got some news for you. So are your friends, because we're sinners. We will hurt one another. We'll need to rebuild that trust. We'll fail one another, and we're going to have to apologize. But God is perfect, and he loves us. And he's always there for us at every single moment. And that gives me such great comfort. John 15, verse 15 says, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard of my Father I have, not, I have made known unto you. It just puts a smile on my face to think Jesus is my friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. 
And that is just such a comfort. And that should comfort us in our down times. We need to focus on Jesus and that he is our friend. Um, Sorry, I lost my spot here. The best way to help a friend in need, and we've already discussed this, but that is prayer. And you know, um, I have a friend that she prayed for me, and she did not pray for God to heal me. Do you know what she prayed for? She thanked God for already healing me. She had so much faith that she prayed and thanked God for healing me. And he did, time and time again. And, you know, I, I, just, I just thought, wow, that's faith. Pain sears us. It can hollow us, too. Sometimes when you're in pain, and I know bone cancer has given me great pain, we can focus on self-pity instead of God's purpose for the suffering. Then... We need to talk to God and ask him to help us because I don't want my sufferings to turn into bitterness. We need to be very careful that our sufferings don't turn into bitterness. If I let that happen, I will be in an even worse place of pain than I already am. So we may have physical pain, but don't get that heart so bitter that you have that bitterness pain at what's going on in your life. Pain is so personal that sufferings can tempt us to um, isolate ourselves. To be honest, this is when we need our friends to pray. So on my bad days, um, when I was laying in bed, you know, my husband would send out several texts, you know, all over, like in Jersey and, you know, Joanne needs prayer, Joanne needs prayer. And I can't tell you the comfort of what that felt like. My daughter Mackenzie is not sitting in here today. It's hard for her to listen to this over and over again. She's out in that parking lot with her dad praying in a car for me right now. She decided she's not gonna go to the teen thing. She's gonna stay with dad and she's gonna pray. And that's where she is. And I can tell you that through that all-night prayer meeting, God really got a hold of my heart, ladies. And I want you to know, this church, if you see somebody from this church, you go thank them for what they have did financially. But that all-night prayer meeting, there's list and list of your names and your prayer needs. And we went through those lists, and it really touched my heart. But I'm thinking, I am sitting here praying all night long When's the last time I stayed up all night long and prayed for my unsaved son? Guilty. When's the last time I stayed up and prayed all night for a, for a friend that's in pain right now? No, nope, I haven't. And God really got a hold of my heart that I need to do that more. And I need to fast more and do those things. You know, Jesus was a great example to us in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed to his Father because he knew sufferings. His sufferings weren't meaningless. He wanted his friends, the disciples, to fight alongside of him in prayer. Matthew 26, verse 38 says, Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch me. Ladies, what did his friends do? They slept. They slept. So when a friend's, when you tell a friend, and I'm I'm guilty of this too, I'm praying for you, make sure you do it. You know how we all say that, hey, I'm praying for you, put you on my prayer list, I'm praying for you, make sure you do it, follow through with those things. Um, Sometimes you need to pray for the person that's sick's family. I would rather have cancer than watch my family have cancer. 
it's harder, I think, on my family to watch it. For my husband to have to sit there and watch a sick wife was a very hard thing to do, and still is. And just a little bit, I'm good on time? Okay. My husband would pray over me at night when, the, when it was really bad, and we almost had to call the hospice in. Um, Joanne, my, lab, my breathing got very labored. Joanne, do you want me to call? And I said, no, Kevin, just pray. Just pray over me. And the peace that I felt and how God brought me through that was amazing. So pray for the families that have to go through it. Um, Acts 12, Brother Charlie preached on this um, when we were here on Sunday. And like I said, he's, he's, you know, I've heard about prayer all the time I've been here. And, you know, you just, you, it's just great when God speaks to your heart and knows. And I didn't even know at this time that Mrs. Clark was going to ask me to speak. So God was speaking to my heart even before that. Um, but if you go, if you go to um, Acts 12, verse 5, it talks in that about, says prayer without ceasing. So we should always be praying. We should continually be praying. And it says, where, me, where many were gathered together praying. Pray together. We need to pray together as friends. And that's real important that we do that. That church on, this church on Friday night prayed together. They all, you could just hear the murmur of prayer. And it was just a sweet, sweet sound to my ears to listen to that. All right, Brad, you can go ahead and put that picture up. My friends have taught my daughter how to be a good friend. It's Mackenzie, Georgia, and Beth. They have to leave Beth because they're going to college. But through my friends being good friends to me, they've taught her how to be a good friend. So ladies, we can be an example not only to the young ladies in the church, but your daughters on how to be a good friend. So if you're, if you're angry at one of your friends, don't let your kids know about it. Don't talk about it in front of your friends. Not that you should anyways. You should just settle it and get it done and over with and pray. And if it can't get settled, then just pray. Pray, pray, pray. But make sure that you're a good example to your children on what it's like to be a good friend. So I'm going to give you a few of my verses that have helped me through cancer. You're more than welcome to write these down if you need to or, or just listen. I'm totally fine with that. Um, Psalms 56, verse 3 and 4 are my life verses. When I go into my MRIs or my CAT scans, this is the verse that I yell out. Most of the people in there know me, and they'll be like, oh, here she comes. The lady that walks with God, I'm like, hey, here's a track. You can walk with God too, you know. And so, you know, we really need to um, be able to share that in the hospitals and to the nurses. One of my um, nurses that was coming in accepted the Lord as her Savior. And so, you know, just the great things that God has done through that. So Psalms 56, verse 3 and 4. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. That verse gets me through the MRIs, the CAT scans, and if there's cancer, more cancer they find, that verse gets me through it. Uh, 1 Peter 4, I mean 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. My pastor was preaching the day that I found out, well, the week that I found out the cancer was in the bone. And when he was preaching, this verse just stepped right out to me. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which has tried you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. We need, to, we need to have joy with the trials, you know? And some days it's not so easy. But don't walk around like, hmm, mad and angry. And you know what? Show Christ joy on your face, even though you're going through a hard time. 
Jeremiah 33, 3. All right. This verse says, call unto me, call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. So I did a study on this verse, and great in this verse means something only God can do. Isn't that great? When you look at this verse, I did not know that. I was like, really? Because you think great, right? And you just think, oh, it's a great thing. It's wonderful. But when you look at great in this verse, it means something only God can do. Only God can take cancer from my body. Yes, I did chemo. Yes, I did treatments. But that did not take cancer from my body. God took cancer from Mackenzie Manarese's body and from my body. He did not... The, the chemo was just to help. You know, I am not against chemo. I am not against medical stuff. I think that God works in all of that, but I know that God is the ultimate one that's taken it. So, as I stand here today, yes, I still have cancer. And you know, it's, it's crazy, I, I believe, and my memory's not very good because I've had so much chemo, but um, I think this is our fourth year here. And... Every year I come here, some years have been worse than others that I haven't been able to, I've, you know, I think one year I had a cane, I wasn't walking well. Every year I come, I said, okay, will this be my last year at the summit? And he just keeps bringing me back. And now I come a week early and I help as much as I can. I don't do as much as my husband, but he just keeps bringing me back. And I've met so many great friends here. And it's just great to have this you know, it has, it has helped our church, the summit, too. It's just a great place. I'm so thankful my pastor decided to come to the summit and find it because it's helped us through hard times. So let God speak to you while you're here because this summit will be just a huge thing. I'm going to pray, and then the ladies are going to come. These are two of my gold coat friends that have, you know, um, well, there's actually four. That's great. They're all my friends, and they're going to help hand these out, okay? So let's pray, ladies. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you so much. I love you so much. I thank you for what you have did. I thank you for helping me today. Lord, I only want to glorify you in this trial. I don't want to glorify myself at all. I only want to glorify you. I pray that I was a help and encouragement to these ladies today, Heavenly Father. Lord, help us to be good friends. Help us to stand beside each other and to hold each other up. Help us to pray together and help us to encourage each other. Lord, give us a great day. Be with the preachers tonight. Be with the music. And just give us a sweet time. We're so thankful for this church. Please bless Solid Rock, Heavenly Father, for what they do here. In your precious name, I do love you. Amen. All right, ladies. Um, we are going to have a break at 12.10. We're going to come back in here for the next session. Um, so if you'd like to use the restroom, get a drink, whatever you need to do, once you get your card, uh, you are dismissed. Thank you.